गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सो नॉट ऑडिबल नॉट ऑडिबल वॉइस नॉट ऑडिबल इट इज नॉट ऑडिबल नाउ हां टू सम एक्सटेंड इंक्रीज सम एक्सटेंड इंक्रीज या दैट्स गुड ओके सो लास्ट क्लास वी वी डिस्कस अबाउट द डेटिंग मेथड्स इन आर्कियोलॉजी डेटिंग मेथड इन आर्कियोलॉजी so and also the different types of dating and their method of dating and how these dating methods are helpful in archaeological studies some of the dating methods are helpful to determine the date from the animal remains or plant remains however some are very good in <coughs> giving precise date on different kind of metal remains and some kind of minerals and stones and there are some method <coughs> some specific methods and technique also so that part we discuss and for this kind of dating methods the archaeologists take help of different subject specialist from various disciplines so that was the discussion so now question is that why these are helpful and answer is already we discussed that because these dating methods are very much required in archaeological dating because there is no such kind of written <coughs> material or document doc, doc, documentation are available for the prehistoric culture whatever we know about their time their chronology their duration that is based upon this kind of dating methods whether that is the absolute method of dating or relative method of dating so this was all about the the dating methods so now we will proceed to our next part of discussion that is the paleolithic culture paleolithic culture as we discuss in our first class very first class that paleolithic means the earliest phase of human cultural evolution the period when human being first started using different kind of tools and started its own culture paleo means old lithic means stone so in paleolithic means the old stone age culture and as we discuss this paleolithic period came during the geological time period of pleistocene era and based on its findings raw material of stone tools stone tool typology stone tool technology this paleolithic culture again divided into three different sub groups that is number 1 lower paleolithic number 2 middle paleolithic number 3 is the <coughs> upper paleolithic so <coughs> when we are discussing this paleolithic culture the basis of identifying different cultural evidence used to differ is we are discussing that lower paleolithic is the oldest time period cultural period experience to human cultural evolution human cultural evolution <coughs> and the time period used to differ from one place to another place one side to another sides and in case of africa with special reference to the stone africa it also used to go up to 2.5 million years ago 
So based on the location, because when we are discussing about the human cultural evolution or human migration, human origin or human dispersion, that time we are arguing that based on the evidences, we are arguing <coughs> the, that the human culture was first originated in Eastern Africa. And probably because of that, the available scientific date to reconstruct the chronology of Paleolithic period is comparatively older in African Paleolithic sites in comparison to the other part of the world. So the theory out of Africa indicates that human being originated in Africa and in course of time through the Red Sea or through the Middle East, they disperse to other part of the world. So when they started moving from the East African countries or East Africa to other part of Africa in one side or to the other part of the world in other sides. That time they were having some kind of changes, modification in their culture. Sometimes they were also adopting the new cultural elements from the other areas. So here, here, so because of this, the lower wealthy cultural evidences of African countries are comparatively older than the Europe and India. So when we're discussing about the human cultural evolution, especially in the old world country, so it is comparatively older. So now we will try to understand the other cultural characteristic features of this Palestinian culture, which are mainly responsible which are mainly responsible for distinguish from one culture to another culture. So lower Paleolithic culture, when we are discussing the lower Paleolithic culture, it differs from the middle Paleolithic culture. And similarly, the middle Paleolithic culture used to differ from the upper Paleolithic culture based on the stone tool typology, stone tool technology, available fossil material and other stratigraphic and other scientific data. So when we are saying the lower policy culture, as I, we said, this is the beginning period of policy culture present towards the middle part of Pleistocene era. In previous classes, we discussed about the Ice Age culture, about the pluvation, about the different kind of interglaciation and glaciation. So all these are very much related and responsible for cultural evolution. So when we're discussing about the lower political culture, Lower Paleolithic culture, we are having the specific kind of tool typology, specific kind of technology. Again, before discussing about the detail about the cultural features, we must have to remember one thing that what we <coughs> discuss, that is the use of stone tools. Here, as we already discussed, during the Paleolithic time, whether that is the lower Paleolithic time, middle Paleolithic time, upper Paleolithic time. Our prehistoric people were basically 
prehistoric people were mainly using the stone tools. They were completely unaware about the use of any kind of metal remains, metal artifact. Metal was introduced later. So here, the stone tool, what the outreach people are using, especially during the lower pelvic culture, are of three types. And these three stone tools include chopper, chopping, <coughs> chopper and chopping tools, cleaver, and hand axes. Chopper, cleaver, and hand axes. So these three types type of stone tools we are prepared by using some specific technique that is anvil technique or block on block technique, hammer stone technique, cylinder hammer technique. So the chopper are usually very crude in nature, very big in size, very rough in state of manufacturing. Usually possessing original cortex on its surfaces. Only one part, one edge is flaked and used for chopping purpose. Chopping is basically prepared for chopping the bones, meat, places or any plant remains. Chopping. Because that particular time our prehistoric people were mainly depending on hunting, gathering, <coughs> economy. Similarly, cleaver, another tool types. That is also introduced during lower pelvic time. So, <coughs> based on the shape, these cleavers are divided into two types. One is U-shaped, another is V-shaped. And cleaver was basically used for cleaving, for cleaning purpose. The third major tool of lower pelvic is the hand axe. Hand axe. A, a stone axe used in hand for different purpose and based on its shape size hand axe are also classified into different types maybe a vivalian hand axe estulian hand axe club <coughs> that uh, elongated handed triangular hand axe lanceolate overt shape hand axe etc so these three major tool types of Paleolithic period, that is the chopper, cleaver, hand axe, are further divided into different subtypes based on their shape, size, and type of manufacturing. Type of manufacturing. So I repeat. Cleaver, I told, based on its shape, it is divided into two types, V-shaped and U-shaped. Why it is called V-shaped and U-shaped? Because cleaver are basically a uh, tool used for cleaving purpose. Size is comparatively elongated in nature. And one edge is used at the working end, whether the <coughs> another end is called bot end, which is used for holding at the time of use. So the butt end, the back end, it is comparatively rough, comparatively rounded in shape or comparatively in pointed in shape. So the shape of butt end 
differ from one cleaver to another cleaver. So based on the shape, it is called as the V shape. V shape means the bottom end is comparatively pointed in nature. U shape means comparatively rounded or U shaped in nature. But however, the working edge of this cleaver is straight, almost straight and thin and flat. So the working end of cleaver is straight. However, the bottom end or back side of back end that is either rounded in shape or pointed in shape because that helps to hold to grip the tool very perfectly at the time of cleaving similarly the hand access based on its size as well as based on technology it named in different way. Based on the shape and size, it is called triangular shape index, subtriangular shape index, elongated index, microquian index, overt shape index, etc. But on the basis of technology or type of manufacturing or technique of manufacturing, these indexes are also named in different way. That is a Bivalian index, Acheulean index, etc. So let's discuss one by one. Based on the shape, based on the shape, some of the indexes which are looking very triangular in shape or almost in triangular in shape are called triangular shape index those indexes looks elongated comparatively longer the point, working index pointed and comparatively longer elongated that is elongated index some of the index are almost round in shape except the working end which is comparatively pointed comparatively sharp and shape is like heart. That is called oval shape index. And shape indexes are also classified based on its technique of manufacturing. That is abivalian index, acheulean index. Where abivalian stands for such kind of indexes which are very crude in nature having mainly the primary flex and big size of flex tools are very crude very big and the early <coughs> earliest variety of hand axis size is big crude edges working edges are not that much sharp or pointed in <coughs> most of the cases the original cortex are present means the raw material selected or collected for making indexes <coughs> are prepared or designed or convert to a tool or artifact with minimum work or very simple working technique by using very simple working technique simply they will remove one or two uh, big size flex and directly they will use but on the other sides <coughs> the indexes which are used by removing both primary and secondary flaking very thin flaking very small in size very uh, sharp and uh, pointed working end in most of the cases, original cortex are not present, are called Acheulean indexes. And in both cases, this type of index are named after the place of findings. Abivalian indexes are found from St. Abivalian and Acheulean are from the St. Acheulean Valley of France. So <coughs> these are the some classification of indexes. Similarly, 
like the hendexes and cleaver chopper are also classified into two types that is the unifacial chopper and bifacial chopper unifacial chopper what is unifacial chopper unifacial chopper is that kind of chopper, chopper which is prepared by removing flake from one edge one side whereas bifacial is such kind of chopper which is used by removing flakes from the both sides so these are the these are the tool typology and technology of lower pelvic culture so coming to the type site com coming to the type site if we will discuss the <coughs> places from where this kind of stone tools are collected or reported we will see this <coughs> kind of lower pelvic stone tools are reported from different parts of the world and among them the oldest are reported from the african countries african countries so in in mainly close to the lake Victoria, Lake Victoria, all the way goes. So these are the places. In case of India, the these lower pelvic tools are reported from different states. And the first lower pelvic tool was reported by the geologist, that is the Robert Bruce Fruit in 1863 from uh, Palavaram near Madras. So nowadays, these stone tools are reported from different parts, including Odisha. In Odisha, these first large building tools were reported from four places by Valentine Ball and mainly from the central western part. So these are about the location of the sites, but if we will see from the excavation point of view, the first excavated Paleolithic site of India that is located in Odisha. And the name of this site is Kuliana. Kuliana, K U L I A N A. This site is located approximately 20 kilometers from Baripada, the district headquarters of Moirbhans and around 3 to 4 km from River Burhabulango close to the Simlipal Biosphere Reserve. The site was for the first time excavated by the <coughs> Dharani Sen and NK Boss of Calcutta University. And this is the first excavated lower pelvic site of India. Nowadays, the available evidences of this Kuliana indicates about rich cultural deposit belong to the lower pelvic period and which is very similar to the recently excavated Paleolithic site of Atiram Pakam of Tamil Nadu. Atiram Pakam site was excavated by Santi Papu and her team and which gave a date, a chronology to that site. 
which is very unique in nature and that provides evidence about it ancient time period which is older than the European lower Pelthic culture. Earlier, it was considered that the European lower Pelthic culture is older than the Indian lower Pelthic culture. But the scientific date found from the Atiram Pakum proves that Indian lower Pelthic culture is older than the European lower Pelthic culture. So this is about the lower Pelthic culture. So coming to the middle Pelthic culture, middle Pelthic culture is the transitional phase between lower Pelthic culture and the upper Pelthic culture. Where people who are using the stone tools of its previous cultural period, that is the lower Pelthic culture, also introduce some new variety of tools, that is the flake tools. And <coughs> All over the world, the available stone tools and artifact indicates that during the Middle Pelvic time, our prehistoric people were basically using the scrapers. Scrapers. This is a kind of stone tools prepared for scraping the diff different kind of animal products or places from the bones or the bark from the tree etc and are basically prepared by using stone hammer and cylinder hammer techniques so scraper are a to stone tool basically prepared by using quartzite raw material and for scraping purpose and based on its size based on its shape these scrapers are also again subclassified into different subgroups and these subgroups includes round scraper, side scraper, end scraper, thumbnail scraper, convex scraper, concave scraper, concave convex scraper, side comb and scraper, etc. So these uh, scrapers are basically the flake tools prepared on a flake having sharp working edge sometimes straight sometimes curved sometimes zigzag in shape but the butt ends especially in case of the side scraper and end scraper are sometimes rounded and butt in nature However, the round scraper are having working edge all around its body. So, these scrapers are basically prepared on the flake. The working edges are sharpened by retouching the small flakes and chips. So, this middle pelvic period is also having its unique characteristic features. This is the time period when the prehistoric people started occupying rock shelter for their habitation. 
evidences of occupying rock shelter during Paleolithic period, especially the lower Paleolithic periods, are comparatively less than the middle and upper Paleolithic periods. So, it is believed that the Neanderthal people was the maker of this new tool tradition or the responsible fossil man who was using this scapegoat. This middle Paleolithic people or the Mosterian people or the Neanderthal people who was occupying the rock shelter for habitation was also responsible for invention of use of fire. He was the inventor of fire. So as we are discussing continuously, necessity is the mother of invention and whenever a person feels that he or she needs something which is not known to him or her. And accordingly, he or she try to prepare that material. And with that, invention of new material starts. So during <coughs> Middle Pelvic time, Mainly, the prehistoric people were using scraper. Be why? The reason behind that, that time they started living, dwelling inside the cave. And the hunted animals, hunted games, it might be the big game or might be the small games or birds. They were hunting from their activity area. They are hunting from the, the jungles and bringing to their shelter, bringing to their cave, where they were using for consumption and other purposes. So <clears throat> inside the caves, after, so they were removing the skin places from the bones and using different parts in different ways and for that the introduction of scraper was very much required apart from that that time because of various factors or natural agencies they came to know about the fire and found that this fire is very much helpful for different purposes. Number one, it helps to protect them, to save them from different wild animals. That's why they keep <coughs> the kept. Oh, they, they, they kept this fire in front of their cave or rock shelter. So it was diverting the wild animal from that particular place. Secondly, this fire was also helping them to maintain their body temperature to, pre to prevent them from the cold weather. So because of this, they are always trying to keep this fire in front of the cave. And number three is that it was very much helpful to roast, to cook, to process their hunted animals while they are preparing their 
cool. So they were roasting the <coughs> animal, hunted animals and eating, which are giving more taste or adding some kind of taste to their food. So probably because of these regions, they started keeping storing fire inside their caves. So <coughs> this is the time period when also the human being started using different kind of bone tools and wooden tools. So the bones of hunted wild animals were <coughs> redesigned, redressed and converted to different kind of artifacts, different kind of tools. and prepare different kind of artifacts. So this is about the Middle Paleolithic period. Coming to the Upper Paleolithic period, Upper Paleolithic is the last stage of, of Paleolithic period, of Paleolithic period. So <clears throat> that particular time, human being started using comparatively smaller size of tool because that time climatic con conditions started changing. So they also started changing their economy. They also changing their tool types, also the tool techniques. So before upper pelvic, what we discuss that is the middle Paleolithic time. That time, as we discuss that priestic people are basically using stone tools which are made of the flake. Large size flakes were converted into different tools, basically the scrapers. And these flakes are basically made of the quartzite raw material. In this middle Paleolithic time, Continuation of using these flakes or the scrapers of middle period time made of the flakes, we are in use. So they are also using similar kind of tools, but the size of these tools we are comparatively smaller than these tools. But <clears throat> interesting thing is that along with these flake tools, scrapers, they also introduce some other tools. These are the blade tools. Blade tools, small blades, basically prepared by using pressure flaking technique and used for hunting small animals. So now, Difference is that in middle place time, the tool typology are very limited in nature and size of tools were comparatively bigger in nature. But upper middle time, the size of stone tools are comparatively smaller than the middle middle tools and also they introduce blade tools. Evidences of use of bone tool increase during the upper Paleolithic time because that was the last stage of glaciation and after that Holocene came. In Holocene time, the climatic conditions completely changed from the Pleistocene time. The earth surface cover, cover with the uh, soil and it become the swampy. So that's, that's why the small creatures started gradually increasing. So during this time, uh, particularly this upper Paleolithic time, that's why they started using different kind of tool. So and now thing is that where these evidences are reported. We discuss about the lower Paleolithic time. We are having evidences from all over the world, including the India. In India, 
we discuss about the Othiram Pakam near Chennai. We discuss about the Kuliana in Moyurban district of Odisha. And if we'll take another example in Odisha, these lower pelvic sites are plentifully reported from the central India, western India, and northern India. Example <coughs> we can take from the sites located in Onugol and Dhenkanal district, which are reported by the Singh, P.K. Singh of Talchal College. He reported numbers of <coughs> Paleolithic sites near Talcher. Similarly, Dr. Binoy Hiller has reported some Paleolithic sites close to the Podzang area like that. In Northern Odisha, sites are reported from the Kolabaria, from the Rairampur area, Monda area, Kiching area, etc. The <coughs> presence of lower pelvic cultural evidences in coastal Odisha is almost nil, almost absent or almost nil. Except the coastal Odisha, <coughs> these evidences are reported from everywhere. So similarly, middle pelvic evidences are also reported both from the central, western and northern Odisha. However, the findings of upper pelvic culture in Odisha context is comparatively very less. Sometimes evidences are not found in some places and in some places <coughs> uh, upper pelvic cultural evidences are completely missing. That's why continuation of middle pelvic and mesolithic is reported in some places. That part we will discuss later. So now we are clear about the pelvic culture, lower pelvic culture, middle pelvic culture, upper pelvic culture. So here when we are discussing the pelvic culture, in particularly from the stone tool typology technology point of view, <coughs> we are getting a kind of evolutionary trend where both the tool typology and technology is gradually changing, gradually evolving from simple to complex. If we'll start from the lower pelvic time and continue till the upper pelvic time, we'll see the development of tool typology. That is at the beginning, we are getting evidences of use of chopper, chopping tool, cleaver, hand axes, which are comparatively more cruder than the flake tool of middle pelvic time. Even within the chopper, we are getting variation. Within the cleaver, we are getting variation. Within the hand axis, we are getting variation. So at the early phase, tool types are very cruder in shape, very rough in shape, very big in shape and prepared by using very simple technology which we can notice in hand axis also in chopper also in cleaver also hand axis as we told we are having hand axis of abivalian varieties abivalian varieties means very cruder hand axis very big hand axis the working heads are not sharp, not pointed, large flakes are present there and prepared by using only the primary flaking. But slowly when we are moving towards the 
SULN variety of hand axes. That time we are noticing that hand axes are comparatively smaller in shape prepared by using both primary and secondary flaking. Flakes are very small, edges are very sharp, working edge is very pointed. So that indicates about the better technology and tool prepared with this better technology are more effective in nature than the previous one. So how technology is evolving. But <clears throat> at the same time also we are observing the big size stone tools that is avl and stone tool or <coughs> the stone tool whatever prepared by using anvil technique or block on block techniques in such cases we are getting the presence or the evidences of original cortexes original cortex or original surface usually at its both sides both surfaces because what they were doing they were collecting a big size of stone, a block of stone, and removing flake only at its one end, one edge, to make it sharp, one end. Just simply, they are preparing sharp to use, but other side was not emphasized in that way. That's why in Abbeville tool, we are having the original cortex, presence of original cortex. However, in case of Acheulean tool, we are not getting such kind of original cortex. These are very small and the original cortex are completely removed by flaking and chipping, by removing small size flakes. And that's why that is more effective. So technological development is there, technological evolution is there. And later, we introduce the flake tool towards the middle building time. Flex tool, when we are saying that name flake itself indicates a thin material which removed, which detached from the original cortex, original core. And because of thin, it was very useful because of thinness it was having the sharp edge sharp edge and because of its thinness it was not taking much effort to convert a tool coming to the upper pelvic the blade tool blade is also a flake blade is also a flake so it's removed basically by using pressure flaking technique that pressure flaking might be direct pressure flaking or indirect pressure flaking okay so <clears throat> they are removing a small flake and using either material for preparing tools or that small flakes was simply retouching its edge and giving a particular desired shape. We may <coughs> take example of prepare, preparation of arrowhead or spearhead. Arrowhead and spearheads, these are the basically the flake tools. Usually prepared on a flake by retouching the edges the sides similarly the other tools and most of the cases we are having the flake tools but it does not mean that core tool we are completely absent during the upper pelvic time it is not like that or the uh, chopper or chopping tools are not present during the upper building time. Use of 
chopper cleaver hendrixes was also evidences evident from different cultural period including the upper paleolithic and mesolithic also but thing is that the size differs sometimes raw material also differs and <coughs> and use also differ the size of chopper evident from the upper belt time and mesolithic time are very small in sides particular bottom sides possess the original cortex and that's why because of this during the mesolithic time these chopper's are called as a heavy duty tool heavy duty tool because towards the mesolithic time the use of this kind of chopper's are very very rare very very less and usually during the mesolithic time or from the time of upper paleolithic time the use of small tool microlithics started and continued till the end of mesolithic time so to prepare this kind of small tools especially during the mesolithic time was a matter of discussion where we will see that this small size of tools were prepared for specific purpose and by following specific technique so let's finish up to the upper paleolithic time so what we are discussing about the evolution of culture evolution of typology evolution of technology it is very clear that technologically also it is changing from simple to complex typologically also it is changing from simple to <laughs> complex usually the use is also changing raw material is also gradually changing use if we we'll discuss how it is changing because during the lower paleolithic time our prehistoric people they were basically hunting they were throwing these big axes hand axes for hunting of wild game big games but later with the change of time they introduce the small size of tool like our spear uh, spear head or the acilian hendexes which are comparatively smaller in size and these hendexes were sometime used in a composite way they fix these hendexes in a bamboo or wooden handle and you to throw for hunting purpose because it was small and it was that's why it was helpful in hunting animals but it was not possible to fix the big size of hand axes a wooden hand axe on a wooden hand axe and for the hunting purpose so these hand axes as we told initially the function was also very simple but gradually it's the prehistoric people started using these hand axes for various activities it was not confined only in hunting but also in digging 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 purpose like take an example they, they were the hunter and gatherer so gathering while they used to move for gathering they dig out the roots tuber of the plants for their food and other purposes <coughs> so hand axe was also used for multi purpose that's why the technology is changing typology changing use is also changing and raw material also started gradually changing initially they are using quartz and quartzite but the use of quartzite become more dominant during the middle paleolithic time and upper paleolithic time because the grain size of quartzite is comparatively smaller than the quartz that's why it's as easy to prepare the sharp artifact object but towards the end of upper paleolithic time <coughs> uh, 
the chart was introduced in a different kind of flakes and blades were prepared from the chart. Chart a kind of igneous rock, very hard rock, having very thin grain size. And in Indian context, the use of black chart and gray chart are very common during the Mesolithic time. But in upper period also, the use of charts are also reported from some sites. So up to upper period, the time, <coughs> the use of typology change, raw material change, place change, the their economy change, even economy, first they were mainly depending on hunting gathering and towards the upper Paleolithic time they also started depending on the fishing of fish, fishing of different sizes sizes of fishes both from the rivers and other water bodies including the seas and with this the lower Paleolithic culture and so here one important thing is that when we are discussing the prehistoric cultural period we used to see that a kind of change in human habitation in human settlement as we discuss during the lower Pelthic time they are basically living on the open air surfaces open air, but gradually towards the middle Pelvic time, they started living, started occupying the rock shelter, the natural rock shelter or caves. In upper Pelvic time, mainly they were staying in the rock shelter and caves. So when we are saying in particular time, they were staying on the open air surface and at another time they were living in the rock shelter. So when we are discussing, we are thinking why people are living on the open air site and why later they shifted to the rock shelter and what are the evidences? How we will know that Initial time they were preparing open air site and why they shifted to the cave shelter. Because the available evidences, available stone tools, and other associate material indicates about their place of habitation. As we discussed in previous classes, during this particular time of Paleolithic, it may be the lower Paleolithic, it may be the middle Paleolithic or upper Paleolithic time. They are living in small bands. Bands. What is the band? Band means a composition of few families. Band is a composition of few families. So, in the evolution process of family, if you will see the first one is family, then coming to the band, then coming to the tribe, chiefdom, and state. So, if you will see the evolution of social organization, so band, we need to see a group of people from few families who live together they have their own headman leader who you to lead them who you to decide about various activities the decision may be related to the sharing of the meats or any kind of gathered material how to share and what will be share of which particular person and 
also responsible for protecting their group from the outer enemies or wild animals so band is a group of families where usually 30 to 45 people used to stay together so during early part that is lower pelvic time they were living in open air and mainly depending on hunting but middle pelvic time they introduce staying in a small place small place and because of that some of the rock shelter natural rock shelter provides some kind of evidences of cultural materials animal and plant remains inside the shelter which are deposited on the floor surface of the shelter but it does not mean that the lower pelvic people they were not occupying the shelter it is not like that evidence is there but if we we'll compare if we we'll compare the lower pelvic people they they are basically preferring to stay outside because their movement was very frequent they used to move fast from one place to another place the settled way of life started slowly slowly and that also very closely related to the present environmental condition so therefore the evidences of middle pelvic upper pelvic mesolithic are more available in the prehistoric rock shelter and these rock shelter are basically the <coughs> natural rock shelters prepared by the nature not by the human being because rock shelter when we will discuss oh, we will see that there are two types of rock shelter one is the natural ro rock shelter another is the man made rock shelter or in other words we can say the caves man made caves and natural caves natural caves we are mainly used for staying during the prehistoric time but man made shelter man made rock shelter or rock carts are found from different places during the historic time period during the historic time period so th at that time human beings are they were cutting the uh, big mountain hills or the floor and preparing shelter for them so example for both the man-made rock shelter rock cut caves and natural rock cut caves are plentifully available in different parts of the world including india in indian context we can see the example take an example the prehistoric rock shelter of bhimbatika bhimbatika present about 40 km away from the bhopal the capital city of madhya pradesh and it is almost equal in distance from Hosangabad in near river Narmada. Hundreds of rock shelters, natural rock shelters are present there and the evidences of different prehistoric cultural remains are found both on the surface, floor and walls. So these are not prepared by human being but prepared by the man in origin context also we'll see 
numbers of rock shelters are discovered from the western odisha that is from the sambalpur sundargarh and jharsugoda districts where the prehistoric stone tools are also plentifully available on the other sides if we will see the rock cut cave rock cut cave which are basically prepared by human being by man for sheltering habitation purpose and this rock cut cave includes the hatigumba cave khandagiri the udagiri caves the dhauli caves etc so these are prepared constructed by human being for some specific purpose so this is the different between the natural cave and madman cave natural cave is prepared by the nature and the man made caves is prepared by the human being even such kind of man made cave in indian context we will see in central india western india etc we can take example of ellora and ajanda ajanda caves which are the rock cut caves prepared by our ancestor during the historic time period so these are about the caves these are <coughs> which are prepared at different period of time but difference is that prehistoric pre times these rock cut caves are prepared for sorry this prehistoric time these are used for staying purpose and historic time these are prepared for yeah. some specific purpose including the settlement accommodation or staying purpose so now coming to the use of this rock shelter one we are discussing about the staying for habitation purpose these rock shelters and probably because of this habitational purpose staying purpose and because of the people who occupied the rock shelter at different period of time the archaeologist found different type of evidences from these rock shelters as we are discussing again and again during the paleolithic time the prehistoric people were completely depending on the hunting and gathering economy hunting and gathering economy where they were hunting big games or wild animals birds and gathering collecting the roots tiber etc and bringing to their shelter that is the rock shelter for use because that time they were doing different kind of activities at different places as we are doing now and based on their activities the archaeological sites are also divided into different groups different categories the source area where they are collecting the raw material that is called the source area the activity area where they are hunting and gathering collecting the roots tiber that is the activity area and the habitational area or place of habitation where they are staying so <coughs> the activity area or hunting area or gathering area that is located outside their shelter or outside their cave where they were living that's why most of the time the stone artifacts usually the broken one damaged one are found in the activity area because at the time of hunting or at the time of digging of roots and tiber 
Sometimes there was a damage of stone tools. Stone tools, what they were using, are breaking the <laughs> breaking, and because of that, they were throwing those kind of damage or broken stone tool on the site on the sports of their activity. And th that's why usually the activity area contains the broken artifacts and which are usually scattered in nature, comparatively very less in nature. But coming to their habitational site, where they were collecting, they are bringing the hunted animals or other food items. They were preserving there for a couple of days or few days and staying there and utilizing their collected material and also preparing their stone tools. And that is the place, that is the cave, that is the shelter. So that's why the stone tools sometimes at the intermediate stage of manufacturing because at the process, at the time of making, some tools were, remain there before its completion. That is called intermediate stage of manufacturing. And at the process of manufacturing, at the time, process of making the stone tool, some tools are incomplete in nature and remain there. So this kind of stone tools, incomplete stone tools are present there along with some kind of flakes and chips. Flakes and chips that represent the making manufacturing activities. Because where they were preparing stone tools, they were remo removing the flakes and chips. Most of the cases, these flakes and chips were remain unutilized and considered as the worst product, waste product. So they were living there only. So that's why in cave sites, uh, along with the stone tools, the flakes and chips are also found. Besides the evidences of bones of different animals, hunted animals, it may be the big games, big animals or small birds, etc. are also present along with these stone tools. So in caves, they are staying, they are preparing stone tools, they are consuming different kind of plants and animal products and the waste material remain there. Nowadays what we are doing in our house, we are having kitchen, we are having bedroom. But that time they are not having separate room for se separate activity. The same place was utilized for multi-purpose. So that's why same place they are preparing stone tools and leaving the worst product. Maybe at the process of making stone tools, the broken stone tools, which are not in use, or they used to feel that it's uselessness. They left there. Flex and chips, they used to live there. The bones, after slaughtering, after eating the flesh, <coughs> the bones also, they would live there. They also leave the bones there because these are not useful. So that's why rock shelter sites consist these evidences. And these particular groups who occupied this rock shelter for a certain period of time, maybe a year or couple of years or maybe for few years, they continuously leave their, this kind of debris, this kind of waste product, this kind of broken tools, this kind of flakes or this kind of bones maybe the hairs, skins, at that particular rock shelter, the floor of the rock shelter. Sometimes the charred bones 
charred wood or the half fired bones or half fired woods are also remain present there because they were using fire for roasting the animal and plant products so sometimes there is a possibility of getting such kind of materials from that rock shelter so <coughs> let's let's see so suppose that particular group they stayed there for one year two year or <coughs> maybe they left that place after six months but while they were occupying that particular place while they were using that particular place that time they are continuously continuously living different kind of cultural product cultural materials animal bo animal bones and other products on that surface and because of geological law of superimposition in course of time if that particular rock shelter in that particular cave remain unutilized for a certain period of time suppose group a occupied that shelter for six months or one year or two years after that they vacated that shelter and they shifted to somewhere else in search of their food because sometimes there is a scarcity of food and because of that in search of food these prehistoric people, the hunter-gatherer people, they used to change their place of location. They used to shift their caves. And <clears throat> because of that, that particular caves remained abundant, unutilized for a quite longer period of time. And because of that, that those kind of cultural products used by those people are covered with the dust, sands, soil, and other natural products. Maybe sometimes a layer of grasses, a layer of small bushes, plants developed or grow in that particular shelter. So, and that particular site become covered. Those particular material used by those groups are covered under that surface and remain there. And in course of time, another group of people may come to that particular place and occupy that place in the similar way. But it does not mean that one group left that place means another group will come. They may come or they may not come. Even the group left that particular place, they might come back after a few years to the same place. So occupation of same shelter, either by the same group again and again, or by the different groups at the different period of time, indicates about the presence of different cultural material on their sides. So while <clears throat> the archaeologists, they excavate those kind of sites, those kind of shelters, they found the presence, the deposition of different material at different layers, different strata, which indicates the bottom most is comparatively older than the top most, which is comparatively newer. So this is about the stratigraphic deposits, deposition of cultural material from the rock shelter. So here we discuss the type of rock shelter, the type of cultural deposit found in the rock shelter, and the causes factor why we get such kind of evidences in those rock shelters. So in this context, now we'll discuss about the Paleolithic art, the prehistoric art, or which is also called the rock art. Rock art. So this rock art or Paleolithic art 
indicates about their cultural activities their cultural activities their <coughs> type of utilization of a particular place their relationship to different <coughs> natural products or surrounding nature their dependence <coughs> on the animals and the plants present in their surrounding area their artistic skill their religious and belief system their sense of colors their skill of preparation of colors their artistic skill etc so here when we are discussing about the paleolithic art paleolithic art is the art form the art prepared by the paleolithic pre people prepared by the paleolithic people so <clears throat> mainly when we are discussing about the paleolithic art we are getting these evidences from the middle paleolithic time periods onwards however the more evidences of this paleolithic arts are present from the upper paleolithic and mesolithic culture so these paleolithic arts are mainly divided into two types paleolithic art are mainly divided into two types one is called home art home art and another is called cave art cave art home art and cave art so paleolithic art is divided into how many types it is divided into two types one is home art one is cave art so <coughs> this artwork executed on some <coughs> on some some either on movable material or transferable material or movable object or on a fixed or permanent place fixed place so based on its location these arts are divided into home art and cave art home art are usually the art prepared by the prehistoric people on the movable material movable material so what are the movable material movable material means those kind of materials which are easy to carry easy to transfer from one place to another place in the prehistoric people they used to carry such kind of material when they used to shift when they used to change their place from one to another in search of the food so as this kind of movable arts are also evident from the estuarian time period which also dates back to almost 300000 year bp so these movable arts are basically engraved or painted on the bones stones or different kind of plant materials sometimes are also found on some animal materials like shells antlor task of the elephant etc so these materials are usually prepared on the small objects 
materials which the prehistoric people used to carry from one place to another place and it might include <coughs> as i told bone stone wood antler tusk shells beads etc these are very tiny these are very small so they used to decorate they used to paint they used to engrave different figurines including the human figurines also or the figurines of different animals or different geometric designs including the circle triangle or some identified unidentified marks on such kind of movable objects and which they used to carry at the time of their migration the change of place of settlement so these are called at the home art on the other side the cave art cave art are the art present on the rock shelters either on the floor or roof inner roof of the rock shelter where the priest people were living and these arts are immovable or not movable these <coughs> art are fixed at a particular place and usually on the rock surfaces either inside the cave inside the shelter or outside but related to this home cave art usually these rock arts are reported from inside the cave not from the outside because outside these <coughs> particular places are not preserved even if the prehistoric people prepare different kind of artistic design art on the rock surface out, uh, at the outer surface of the shelter but because of the exposure to the sun exposure to the rain or exposure to other animal remains usually these artworks are not preserved not protected and because of this kind of natural agencies it destroyed either flaked out or the color faded but inside the rock shelter either on the wall or on the ceilings floor are comparatively protected from the water action protected from the sunlight and also protected from the animals and birds that's why these are present in these rock shelters so the main difference what i told are one kind of art which are present on the movable material on the movable object are called home art another which is fixed which is permanent present on the wall surfaces of the rock shelter are called cave art another difference if we will see between the home art and cave art is that usually in home art the prehistoric people were using engraving they are making group lines maybe with the help of a flex or points on the bones on the woods or antler and with this group marks they are making different designs 
either geometric designs or design of a particular animal plants or they were making some kind of unidentified material but usually in grooving form in grooving but in case of cave art both the grooving or what we call the engraving as well as painting are present in some places both engraving and painting are present together beside this another major difference between home art and cave art is that usually in home art they are preparing the small art for either for the decorative purpose or for the ritualistic purpose or for different kind of religious ritual activities where symbolic representation was very common but in case of rock art sometimes the original life size of different animals human beings are also present and both in engraving and painting forms or either engraving or either painting forms also sometimes some symbols are very tiny very small and symbolic in nature but here mainly they were making art what they were observing in their surrounding ecology and because of that the rock arts usually contains the figure of different wild animals present around them during that prehistoric period or the hunting scenario hunting of deer hunting of animals or <coughs> any small animals hunting of birds etc along with some kind of weapons like bow and arrow spearhead etc so small designs small or small decorative items are usually not present in this cave art so this cave art are also known as the rock art rock art rock art means the art prepared on the rock on the stone either on the floor roof or top but when we are saying the cave art means the art prepared on the stone but inside the cave so when we are saying rock art and cave art the basic difference is that rock art includes the art whatever prepared on the rocks in any places but rock art when we are saying rock art it, it is a part of art only prepared on the rock but at the same time if we compare with the cave art cave art is the art which is prepared on the cave if we will compare we, we can see we can link this cave art and rock art in such a way that cave art is a part of rock art or cave art is a part of rock art because rock art also includes the art which are prepared outside the cave so usually uh, in home art people who are using different kind of pointed material like burin point and grooving and graving on this either on the ivory on the antler on the bones and mainly 
use for decorative purpose, aesthetic purpose, or religious purpose. But on the other side, the cave art are specially meant for representing different cultural activity, including the hunting gathering activity, as well as representing different animal remains present during that particular time that particular time so here if we will see the examples of home art and cave art the example of home art are evident from the Asian culture onwards in in different places in different places so but <coughs> this rock art or what we are calling the cave art are present reported from such kind of places where the natural rock shelters are present. Because as we told, they were mainly occupying the natural rocks, natural rocks. So in <coughs> rock art, they were using different kind of colors. Sometimes one color, sometimes mix of multiple color, might be two or more than that. And based on the colors, these rock art are also divided into two types. One is monochrome, monochrome or single color art. Another is bichrome or multichrome or multiple color so sometimes they were using one material one color to depict their symbols depict their picture sometimes they were using different colors and these colors are usually extracted from different plant and animal remains as well as prepared from different kind of rocks, minerals present close to them. So, so the plant remains which are basically used for preparing colors includes the leaves, the flowers, the bark, the fruit juice, etc. The animal products which includes in preparing colors are the blood, the fat, and the stone minerals basically used are the red ochre, the sand particles of different colors, etc. So these are the materials they were directly using or mixing and using for painting. So based on the availability in their surrounding ecology, nearby area they were using different colors so coming to the prehistoric cave art sometimes also we used to see because of occupation of a same shelter same cave for different period of time or by different groups at different times sometimes some of the rock shelters contains prehistoric arts in a one surface by multiple group of people 
and in the form of overwriting. So one group of people came, they prepared, they drew some kind of art, they prepared sketches or painted on the floor. In after few years or after a particular period of time, another group came to that particular shelter, occupied for a particular time. At that time, they prepared some drawings or art, artwork on the same surface where the previous group had already prepared. So that's why overwritings or superimposition or painting over another painting are also evident. So to know this kind of paintings, the archaeologist you to study the variation of colors, variation of material, chemical composition of the materials, the type, the form, the style, or the nature of painting, type of images, type of activities, the size, the designs, etc. And based on that, it is said that that particular rock shelter was utilized by the multiple number of groups at different period of times. Here we may take some example from the Bhimbatika World Heritage Sites, which is declared at the World Heritage Site by UNESCO because of presence of prehistoric rock shelter. At Bhimbitka, there are number of rock shelters. At Bhimbitka, there are number of rock shelters which consist different kind of rock art, different kind of paintings. Some are belong to the prehistoric time period up to the upper Paleolithic Mesolithic, whereas some others are of the historical time period. Means from the prehistoric time, from the Middle Paleolithic, Upper Paleolithic to the historic time, including the Mesolithic time, those rock shelters we are utilized by the different groups of people. Means historic times. It is either BC or AD. But prehistoric time, if we are going up to the Mesolithic time, at least 10,000 years BP. And if we are going further beyond, it might be 70,000 years, 80,000 years BP also. So from that particular time to the recent past, that is the historic time, earliestic time, those rock shelters we are continuously under use by different groups of people. That's the same shelter. We are having different types of paintings with different colors, different figurines, different shapes, different styles, and having different theme or different contents. Some <coughs> Some places we are getting some paintings having people are riding on the horses, holding the weapons. However, in some places we are getting hunting of deers and other wild animals with bow and arrow or spearheads. And in some shelters, it is overlapping. It means same shelters was occupied by different group of peoples. So this rock art or this home art are integral part of studying prehistoric archaeology because this art narrates these paintings, these engravings 
give some kind of evidences related to the aesthetic value, related to the artistic skill, related to their sharing of leisure time, relating to the environmental condition present during prehistoric time, relating to the types of animals present during that particular time, related to the activities done by prehistoric people at particular time. So there are different functions, different kind of analysis we can make from this prehistoric art. One side, we are say, as we are saying, it is helping us to determine the environmental condition. It is helping us to determine the aesthetic knowledge. It is helping us to know the anim type of animals present during that time. It is helping us to know the type of activities they were doing. It is also helping us to know their knowledge, their skill of preparing different colors. So there are multiple functions, multiple role, what we, one could able to know from these row cards. So it indicates different knowledge system. And, th and that's why the presence of prehistoric rock art is highly helpful in studying the prehistoric culture, helping to determine the chronology, the time period of prehistoric period. But the presence of prehistoric art, especially from the Middle Paleolithic and Upper Paleolithic culture, are very rare in comparison to the rock art discovered, located from the Mesolithic culture, Neolithic cultures, or the Chalcolithic or early history culture. So there are various factors behind this presence of more number of art during the later period of time. And there are some factors which are responsible for, for having less number of prehistoric art during the Paleolithic time. The factor includes the development of skill, development of artistic skill, the utilization of times. As we said that during the Paleolithic time, during the Middle Paleolithic time or Lower Paleolithic time, most of the time they were spending in roaming here and there, in moving here and there, in search of wild game. So they were comparatively getting less leisure time. And also they were living in open air. And with the change, with the development of culture, they started occupying rock shelter. They started preserving their hunted animals for a couple of days. So that's why they, they were getting more leisure time. They were staying more time inside the rock shelters. And probably that is one of the factor for having this prehistory painting. But even if they were doing painting, engraving, these are comparatively less than the Mesolithic painting. Because Mesolithic time, the climatic condition changed entirely. Because of the temperature, the deposited ice melted and most part of the earth's surface covered with the water. And the area becomes swampy. And that's why most of the time they forced to stay inside the rock shelter and used to depend on fishing activity. So since 
they were using rock shelter for a <coughs> long period of time and probably that is the one factor which forced them to prepare different kind of designs painting on the surface of the wall and that's why mesolithic time we are having more number of painting engraving and which are comparatively developed improved version of the prehistoric arts so now thing is that suppose we are getting some prehistoric art of paleolithic time we are getting some prehistoric art of mesolithic time we are getting some prehistoric art of neolithic time or the earliest time how it would be possible to differentiate to separate one from another without going for in depth scientific study or without going for any detailed analysis so suppose we have discovered some rock shelter and immediately how we will know that this particular site belong to this particular culture either paleolithic mesolithic neolithic chalcolithic earliestic or iron time so before going for detailed scientific study it is possible to give a broad time period to a particular site based on the available evidences suppose we got some kind of paintings or artwork on the rock shelters and at the same time while we are excavating on the floor we are getting some kind of cultural material belong to the middle paleolithic or upper paleolithic maybe some kind of stone tools some kind of bone tools or any kind of fossil evidences means that indicates the time period of those people who we are living the bone remains the stone artifacts indicates about the time period of that particular culture means the user the user of those stone tools or bone tools and their time period so if we are getting this kind of evidences we may correlate those kind of paintings to those kind of available evidences so based on that we may say that this particular painting is available in the same shelter where we are getting stone tools bone tools of middle paleolithic or upper paleolithic time that's why these paintings might be prepared by these people who are living there that is the mesolithic people sorry upper paleolithic people or middle paleolithic people similarly for mesolithic neolithic that is one another thing is that suppose we are getting some kind of specific kind of painting objects or styles or the content the theme of that painting usually in early historic painting early historic rock art we get you to see the hunt war scene people are fighting and also riding the animals like deer elephant and using a specific kind of weapons and they also dressed they were also wearing some specific kind of dress maybe the crown clothes wearing a specific kind of shoes or they are in a group going in a procession these are the common features of the alistic painting if we are having some kind of painting the figure relating to different kind of agriculture activity maybe they, they are tilling the land plowing the land along with the two cows or two oxen or maybe domestication 
of different animals. Maybe they are <coughs> uh, moving along with the numbers of cattle or, uh, or the goats or sheep that indicates about the domestication of life or that indicates about the agriculture. What does it mean? Means these particular paintings or engravings we are prepared at the time when people started agriculture or origin of agriculture was started or when people were de uh, depending on pastoral way of life, pastoralism. And pastoralism is partly related to our ancient occupation and which started from the Neolithic onwards. It might continue till, uh, till present time, but uh, the other associate features used to differ. Similarly, if we are getting some kind of painting of hunting and fishing activities or presence of different ritual activities, presence of different uh, riverine or marine animals, presence of weapons, very small, very tiny weapons like uh, arrowhead, points, blades, etc. That indicates about the time period that is the Mesolithic. So these are the some kind of clue, some kind of evidences which help us to get the time period date of a particular art found from the archaeological context. But it does not mean that this is the complete one. So apart from that also, the archaeologist used to go for further analysis to get the more precise date or <coughs> from the colors, from the painting, from the symbols, etc. So and this is all about uh, this chapter yeah. of Paleolithic culture. Today we discuss about the lower Paleolithic culture, middle Paleolithic culture, upper Paleolithic culture and Paleolithic art. And we try to understand the tool typology, the technology, the evolution of culture, and the present of different kind of art, Paleolithic art, Mesolithic art, and how these art are related to Paleolithic culture, Mesolithic culture, or any prehistoric cultures. So how these are related to each other. So this is all about this particular chapter. So with this, we are concluding the today's class. If you are having any questions, Corey, you may ask. So we can have a brief discussion on that. Otherwise, we will conclude our class for today. Thank you. So over to you. Yes, yes please. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Shall we stop? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So thank tomorrow you. we'll start at the same time. Okay, thank you. Bye. Sir, Gottagali, to the last day, for the Shukravar, we have class. No, no. Today, for the last day, we have done a lot of things. Just like the Mandir, just like the color, the outline, the color, the color, the color. No, no. Sir, it's okay. Just like that, we have done this. We have done that. 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 छुट्टी